Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, AvriLR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even closer to the 1,200 subscriber ladder. I really do appreciate all of the support. We've got some huge news regarding the Konami Yu-Gi-Oh! policy documents. Now, you may be thinking, Avery, this isn't a ban list. This isn't something huge. Like, what, what the hell are you talking about? This is fantastic news, ladies and gentlemen. Every now and again, Konami will update their tournament policy. This applies for whether you go to locals, regionals, YCS, anything. You need to know about this policy document. You need to know what's updated, and you need to know what the standard is and how you should conduct yourself uh, in the Yu-Gi-Oh scene. This policy document is so important that if like you're on Twitter or Facebook, whatever, and you're talking shit to someone about Yu-Gi-Oh and like you're threatening them, like you can actually get banned. Like this isn't just for like going to a tournament. Like this has implications outside of you know the regional venue, so to speak, or your local card shop. So the biggest thing about this, I don't remember exactly where it is in here because we're kind of we're gonna try and kind of go through everything, but. The standard for rounds, whether you are going to locals, regionals, or a YCS, is now 45 minutes. <laughs> Konami, we have been asking for this for years now. Ever since the time rules got changed, people are like, give us 45 to 50 minutes. Give us an hour round. Give us something. And so finally, now they are implementing the 45 minutes per round, not just for YCSs and nationals and all that, but for regionals and locals as well. And some of you might be thinking, Avery, it's only five more minutes. What the hell difference is that going to make? You would be surprised how five more minutes can make or break a game, ladies and gentlemen. You know, have you ever been in that situation where if you just had an extra like 10 seconds to, you know, make an exceed attack and then make a Zeus and nuke the board. I can't tell you how many times that has happened to me. Five more minutes is going to be fantastic. And of course, if you think someone is stalling you, then you better call that judge and get that person DQ'd because, excuse me, because it's it's not going to be tolerated, especially with 45 fucking minute rounds. And if you are going to stall, then good luck, pimp, because people like me are going to call your ass on out at uh, call your ass out on it if I could talk today uh, every single time. They also made some changes here to uh, the social media, um, basically just saying uh, if you intend to make content out of an official event, familiarize yourselves with the code of conduct. Likewise, if you're an actual journalist, if you don't do anything like that, if you're not a YouTuber like me, then you don't have to really give a shit. Uh, legal moves, they expanded the section on restricting legal moves. We separated the cannot retract from can retract due to illegal activations as there's currently some confusion about whether or not a duelist can retract an illegal activation versus being forced to change to a legal target. Uh, they of included some screenshots here uh, on the policy document itself talking about live streamed events where you know you can't use unofficial Yu-Gi-Oh merch like if you want to be on the live streams like you can't be busting out your non Yu-Gi-Oh waifu sleeves and shit like that with like titties hanging out like nah you, you can't be doing all that pill uh tournament registration and deck registration and all that uh duels can submit deck lists they can resubmit deck lists submitted online, but only to accommodate for a new forbidden limited list or a new product release. So this was actually something that came up with YCS Minneapolis, I believe like last year, where uh, if you remember our homie Valley D, um, he wanted to go to YCS Minneapolis, but we didn't know if we were going to have a new ban list by that point. So it was kind of up in the air like, hey, what happens if I submit a deck list, but then the ban list drops and now my deck list isn't good anymore or I need to change it. So now with this in place, now we know, hey, you can update your deck list and resubmit if need be. That should have already been there. But I mean, when you have so many sections in your uh, policy document, things like that can potentially get overlooked. Uh, sleeves, same thing. Make sure you got the right sleeves. Tournament materials. This is a great one. So... The main takeaway for this is zone markers have been added to tournament materials. So it says here we've added a new tournament material, quote, zone markers to indicate block zones. This was something that Konami was really, uh, what, what's the word, draconian about? Where like we couldn't use dice, we couldn't use a pencil, we couldn't use a fucking eraser to show like what zones were locked by Kashtira Shangri era. And so it was just really weird because they're like, you have to write down on a piece of paper and make like a fucking chart for every round. And like, it was really draconian in my opinion. So now they've added a new section and it says that zone markers is now indicated uh, that you can use a tournament material that is called zone markers to indicate block zones. We clarified that the head judge does not 
have the right to go against tournament policy by allowing or disallowing tournament materials that are prohibited or allowed in policy. We added additional information for live stream matches. What does this mean? The most popular change here is the inclusion of zone markers in tournament materials. Please read the requirements carefully to ensure that your zone markers are within policy. You will also need to make sure your tournament materials are within a specific policy. If you are on camera for a live stream match, live stream policies are more strict than the general policies for tournament materials. So main takeaway is zone markers have been added. You can now use zone markers. That is fantastic. Uh, the field layout, updated example text, replacing cards on the field with the text used in the speed duel addendum. What does this mean? Just keeping policy and wording consistent between documents. Who gives a shit? They updated uh, note taking. We separated the allowed and not allowed examples. We added some new examples, addressing points of confusion from judges and duelists. What does this mean? This section is clearer now and easier to understand. I decided to pull up the policy document here as well. And it says here that uh, examples of like what you can keep track of, a duelist A activates offering to the Doom during their opponent's turn. Both duels should write a note that duelist A must skip their next draw phase, tracking mandatory effects, returning deck to correct state. Um, and then examples of like what's not allowed, uh, consultating outside notes is not allowed. Duels may not con consult a list of side deck choices against specific decks in between games in a match. Using generic items instead of writing notes is not allowed. Duels day activates offering to the Doom during their opponent's turn. Duels A cannot place a coin or other item on the deck to remind them not to draw on their next turn. Uh, another example is during their turn, a duelist's skarm is sent to the grave. The duelist may not make a note to resolve its searching effect during the end phase as this is an optional effect things of that nature. They also added a point here about card hand and deck verification. It says here we split the examples for not appropriate for a judge to verify and appropriate for a judge to verify into separate tables to make the information easier to process and retain. They added an additional example. Some common misconceptions get cleared up. Handling card loops, basically just talking about how you can go about uh, dealing with multiple cards, the same cards being looped multiple times. Konami already covered this before where you can tell your opponent, hey, I'm going to FTK you because I'm going to loop, you know, Cyberstein with whatever, just an, as an example. Uh, and then the opponent can choose to scoop from there or you don't have to play out the whole loop, uh, things like that. Uh, conceding or a game or a match. This is interesting. They said you cannot ask your opponent con to concede under any circumstances. In addition, you cannot concede a game or match after the result is already decided, i.e. you may not reduce your opponent's life points to zero, then concede the game to them. I don't know why you would do that unless like you're friends with the person you're like hey i'm just going to give you the win um i i don't know what kind of people would ask their opponent to scoop it kind of reminds me of like the last regional i went to where i drew for turn and only had one card in my hand and my opponent goes he just kind of shrugged his shoulders and he goes do you end your turn and i'm like well maybe i have a play to make bitch like i mean i in that example i could maybe call a judge on that but like why like i feel like we're just kind of wasting both of our times at that point it's not like i'm going to suddenly steal the win because my opponent was a dick he's just a dick <laughs> so like you know sometimes you just got to have thick skin and know that some people are going to be assholes you know that that's on them they're the ones with issues um reporting a match result basically if you win the match uh and you have the match slip and you go to turn it in to the uh tournament organizer or whatever uh you have five minutes from the end of the round to do that um that that's really all there is uh tiebreakers uh same thing an additional tiebreaker has been added uh the sections being reorganized the additional tiebreaker will make it much less likely for duels to end up with identical tiebreakers and tied for the same final standing uh that that that's just kind of whatever uh unsporting conduct don't be an asshole uh Con konami community code of conduct this is like what i'm talking about where like if you're bullying people on twitter and stuff like konami can ban you um so just don't be an asshole uh card legality play cards that are legal and not banned mark cards don't use sleeves that look like like they just got stepped on in the sand so guys that is pretty much the crash course of what has been updated Look at the policy document yourself. It is multiple pages long, but to make sure you fully understand, be sure to look at the policy document yourself. I'm not going to go through that because that's pages upon pages. I would still, though, take the time to look this over. So, guys, let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. 45-minute rounds. I'm very happy about that. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.